So has anybody here ever worked with a hard money lender before? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, okay. I like that. All right. In a personal level, not as a On a personal level. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So. For clients. There's still pizza if you want this. <laughs> For clients. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mine right. was a deal that fell through, so now that's why I'm coming here. Mm -hmm. You're a hard money lender. You're giving us a call. Exactly. Uh, we're actually known being the deal savers. That's what we market Perfect. as. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, this is a perfect class then for you guys. Uh, I know this info, so at any point, if you guys have any questions, just raise your hand, burst it out, it doesn't matter. I'll go into it for you. This isn't going to be a, a long sales pitch or anything. It's not what I'm here. We work on sharing knowledge, establishing a relationship, and building trust with you. That's how we sell. We do that by giving you guys education, coming out, and, and working with you guys, walking you through how to get a hard money loan. So, with that said, you should probably understand the different types of lenders. Uh, we go. So, well, let me first ask, why would you want to use hard money? For those who have used it, why have you used it before in the past? People, people can't verify their money in their cash business. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, just to repeat for the camera, people can't verify their money because they're in a cash business, so they can't go to a bank and, and get a loan. Uh, but even, even more basic than that, uh, why Why would you need to go to a hard money lender, whether it's a bank or not, in the first place? Investment. What? Investment, yeah, yeah. So the key on this is staying liquid and not using your own money. That's, that is the number one reason why you want to use a hard money lender. Uh, a lot of people always say, well, you don't have money. Partly true, because you do actually want to have money before you go into this. But the purpose of using hard money is to compound your money leverage your money. So if you have $100,000 in the bank, that's now worth $500,000 in buying power with a hard money lender. That's just an example. If you have $20,000 in the bank, it becomes $100,000. It's a five to one ratio. Every lender is gonna be different. Every deal is gonna be different. But that is why you wanna use hard money. So if you're using it for clients, you know they say, well, I don't have enough money. You say, well, actually, you might have enough money. So that's a, a key thing to keep in mind. So that's why you wanna use hard money. Now, let me tell you a little bit about us. I guess I would skip this part. I should tell you about us before we dive in. Um, so we've been in business for 12 years. Uh, we just hit our 12 year mark. So that would be 2007, right before the crash. Uh, now the crash was probably the best thing that happened to us in our place at the time. So we're privately funded. I'll go into what that means versus a non-private uh, hard money lender. But basically we were the only people on the block that had money. So People couldn't go to a bank, couldn't go to your old private lender because they got washed out. Everything was just taken out. But the way we built our loans, we survived it and then prospered big time on it. So we've been in this business for 12 years. Me personally, I've been doing it for about three years now. Uh, I got I cheated the system because I have a brother who did all the hard work for me and got me in. Uh, and that's how I landed here. So hard money bankers, we survived the storm, preparing for the next storm. Um, it's, I'm not trying to predict the future because everybody always does that. I'm just saying it, it reminds us very much of what we felt back in 2006, 2007 right now. It feels like we are at the top, so we encourage everybody to prepare right now. Um, but hey, if we're wrong, we're happy to be wrong. You know, we'd love to see the markets keep going up and up because uh, this year has been, I'm sure a lot of you know, insane since. So we hope, it, we hope the trend stays, but we also are aware of uh, a lot of key indicators saying, hey, we might be at the top here. So, privately funded means we, it's all friends, it's personal money, it's friends' money, and it's family money. We don't have to go to a bank. We don't have to go to an institution and follow the rules. It is the wild, wild west when you get out there. Once you leave owner-occupied, this is actually a key term, once you leave owner-occupied, there's basically no laws. Like, it's, it's whatever you work out with that lender is what is going to happen. The lender never tells you, no, legally you can't do that. That means their lawyer said, we shouldn't do that because it doesn't work for our system, but you can really do whatever you want. So that's important for you to know because you want to establish a relationship with the lender you trust. That's why we go out here and do this because there is, A, a lot of scams out there. It's true. Uh, if anybody goes on Facebook, you probably see a scam a day when it comes to lending. Uh, so, and then B, you want to get to know your lender uh, on a personal level and on business level. It's, it really does go hand in hand. It's just 
I, I compare it to a contractor. When you get a good contractor, you keep them, you never let them go. Same thing with the lender. You want to get to that relationship with the lender. And it's a win-win situation, especially for realtors. If you refer, we can give you referral fees. It's just a very happy business for everyone making money. Okay, so that's a lot on us. Does anybody have any questions on property bankers? No? Okay, so that's pretty basic. So let's go into the two main types of lenders. Oops, seen eraser. So designs and command stays on top. Uh, we have your institutionally funded ones. These are typically your bank back. And then you have private money. Uh, almost every week I get into the argument of people saying private money is different than hard money. I just tell them, if you're looking for money for a property, it doesn't matter what your definition is of it. They both give you money for properties. That's it. So, I mean, tech, I'm not going to go into it because everyone has a different definition of these two. In short, they're both hard money. What's the difference between the two? Institutionally funded is basically they are a layer in front of a bank where they get their money from a bank. Let's just say $100 million. They, they work it out. It could, it could be a popular bank, a PNC, Bank of America. But they were given basically a line of credit, essentially. And they say with the bank, okay, we will follow certain rules of yours uh, and we will lend the money on it. So it's, it's in a way, so they don't have to hire staff and build out the company. They let this other company take their money and do it for them. Private money is just friends, family, personal money. It is, there's no regulation other than what the team decides. So that's the big difference. Now what does that mean for you as a borrower? That means time and ease. Those are the two things that you will notice please do. The thing with flips or buying and holding, the, the biggest thing you want to know as an investor is get in and get out. That is the most important thing for you making money. So you want to be as fast as possible. That's why this whole business exists because banks at a conventional rate, they can't, it takes them months and months and months to approve. Uh, approve your loan. So they set up these hard monies, hard money companies that can do this in a month or two, hopefully less, but get you moving on your project because you're trying to make a, a way of living out of this, right? You're trying to flip it in, in a year, within a year. So that's how they get around it. They set up hard money companies that are backed by them and you have your private money. Now, this is our, this is my biggest selling point that I'll tell you guys. We can close in 24 hours. So if anybody's ever done a closing, you know how insane that is. Yeah. Um, these guys just can't do it. Mainly because whatever you give them, uh, even if they come in and say we're, we're a no doc or a limited doc, that means uh, documents, like actual documents, uh, for example, your, your bank statements, uh, where, where you can't prove that you have a cash, but they're going to ask that. They're going to they're say we need your bank statements, we need your credit card statements, we need your pay stubs, we need everything about you. They need to know you inside and out, not because they care about the property, but because they care about you. They're looking at you and saying, are you going to pay us back? Because if you don't, we don't care about the property. We're coming after you. Private money has that flipped. We are looking at the property first. So let's say you bring a flip to us on address 100 ABC Drive, and you think it's going to sell for $200,000. And we think, yes, OK, we agree with you. We will lend $100,000 on that. So you can go do that. We are coming after the property first if things go wrong. We're not coming after you first. That's a very big difference between these two. We want to make our money off the property, whereas the banks want to make their money off of you. I, I'm on the private side, so I'm obviously biased. I would recommend private side if you're trying to protect yourself because we're looking at the deal with you as if we are an investor. Banks are going to send an appraiser out. Appraiser is a person who just goes out <laughs> writes on their, their pen and pad, you know, uh, this, there's a nick in this corner, so that's minus $50. And then they're going to look at comps. But you have to keep in mind, these guys don't have any stake in the game. They don't, if they're wrong, $20,000, $50,000, they don't give a shit. Right. Yeah, just, just to put it flat, they don't care. <coughs> we care if you're off 10, if you're, if you're off five grand, we care, right? Because this is our money that we're, we're worried about losing. So it's, it's, uh, it's called skin in the game. You'll hear that term with lenders. Not only do you ask for a down payment, but 
we like to know that everybody involved has something to lose here, because that means everybody's giving it their full attention. Banks say, you have 750 credit, I don't care about what this house is worth, you're gonna pay me back, because they, through their checks, they deem you as somebody who's gonna pay them back. Now, there is a time and place for both of these. So, both are good to have. Uh, so let me, let me first write the first pro here is, I don't even know what to call that actually, because I like that. What's that? 24 hours. Well, yeah, 20, yeah so time. <laughs> time. Time is, is the biggest one with private money. Because when you come here, depending on who you go to, typically your minimum is two weeks. And that's if you are a very seasoned borrower. Uh, you're gonna have all your docs ready. You've probably already even done a flip with them. Because when you give them your docs, even if you've done a flip with them, they have to go send it to the bank, wait for the bank to approve it, send it back to you. Then they gotta go send the appraiser out. And the appraiser has to go out, do the report, and come back to the, it's just, it's just a non-stop back and forth process. And that's if it goes smoothly. You're looking at two weeks. It rarely does. It's almost always something up that happens in the house, whether it's something with, uh, hey, your credit changed five points because you just got a new car. We got to start all over. It happens all the time. So when you're, you thought it was going to take two weeks, and you had, let's just say you had a month to close on a deal that you got under contract, and all of a sudden they're pushing it to the end, and you're, you're thinking, I don't know if I'm going to have the funds in time. That's when people give us a call. And that's when, you know, you need a deal saved, you, you give us a call. But why do you go to these guys in the first place? Rates. They're going to be cheaper. So, so rates are the biggest thing. Now, typically speaking, you're doing a 12-month loan with the, with the hard money lender. That's roughly how long you're going to be in a, in a loan. If anybody's asking for six months, I'd be careful with that. We call those loan-to-own lenders. Uh, basically, they are there to trap you and try to see try to see you fail rather than succeed. Uh, those do exist. They're rare, but I always caution you: just don't sign a six-month contract if you can avoid it. Look for the twelve-month to two-year lending. Most most of the time, ninety-five percent of your loans are going to be twelve months. That means by the time you inked on a contract, you have twelve months to pay that loan back. Uh, you'll be paying typically monthly interest-only payments, and then. At the end of those 12 months, well, hopefully you've sold it way before the 12 months, but if you haven't, depending on the lender, we will work out an extension with you, but it's going to cost you. Uh, but some lenders don't, and they just go into the foreclosure right away, and you lost the house. So that's why I encourage you to develop a relation and know these things about your lenders, because you really don't want to find yourself in that situation. It's a messy, messy process. Okay, so that's a lot on the two types of lenders. Any specific questions before I go into? <clears throat> Do you have anything at all where it's a little longer for like an owner occupied that can't verify the cash and so forth and so on, or everything's like a year maturity? Or Good question. I'm going to address the owner occupied first. Private money cannot touch owner occupied. Uncle Sam drew, drew the limits there. What, what if they're putting twenty percent down and saying they're buying as an investment? They're actually as soon as you say that, we're good to go. We can work on that. <laughs> In investment property is the key term we need to hear. Do you need a minimum of 20% down for that? Or what? So that's going to depend on your lender. Us, it honestly goes from property to property, bar to borrower. Some lenders say, like, oh, we're 20% down every time. We don't do that. We're going to look at the borrower. Well, first we're going to look at the property, and then we're going to look at the borrower second. So what I mean by that is typically... As a borrower, you are coming up with your own numbers, seeing, meaning I think my house is worth X, Y, Z. We have to do the same process. Uh, it's probably gonna sound condescending. We're better at it than most people. It's what we do for a living. We look at houses every day, all day, right? So if this person's number is $100,000 off of where we are on a $200,000 house, that's a big red flag for us. So we're going to actually ask you for a bigger down payment because we, as a, as a borrower, so there's two things. We're looking at the property first, but we also care about the execution of the deal from the borrower. So they have to be able to complete the flip in order for us to want to do a deal with them. We don't want to go through the foreclosure process. We avoid that at all costs. That is a nightmare if anybody's ever what's been through. The, what's the longest term loan you can offer for investment property? 
Um, a five-year balloon or ten-year balloon? Yeah, we can do those. We can. Typically, people are only taking the 12 months with us because our rates are, are higher. So you, normally you'd want to go with a long-term lender in that scenario. There are instances where we go and do the five to 10 year balloon loans, yeah. Um, so it's more situational, it's rare, but yeah, we can certainly do that. So it's just it's just expensive. So that's why we, we don't encourage it unless the situation calls for it. Well, say you got somebody's got like a 700 FICO score, 705, and they don't show all their money and they buy this investment, they're looking for like a five year balloon or something. Yeah. I, we, we could do it, but they just they just have to understand the rates are going to be and higher. Going to be like two percent over the going rate, or oh no, we're way higher than that. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, our money comes out to you. This more like a ten on top of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah more, ten, exactly. Yeah, that's ten on top of that too. <laughs> so all right, let's talk about our rates. Um, so so quick question: news, 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 what it comes looking for? Yeah. <laughs> quick question. Yeah. Um, what percentage of, of upper value market do you guys lend? Investment property. So the question is, what? How much do we lend of the after repair value? After repair. Yeah, the ARV. We go up to sixty-five percent. Now this covers acquisition, rehab, and closing costs. Hmm. A lot of times lenders don't include all three of those. They'll give you a number. So has anybody ever leased a car? Right. <laughs> so the process of lenders is the same advertising that you're going to see when you're leasing a car. Hundred dollars a month. And then you look at the fine text and it says, after you pay for $10,000 down payment, right? Lending is the same way. So you wanna work out the numbers. So that's a really good question what you just said. We go up to 65% of the ARV. That covers acquisition, closing costs, and rehab. Other lenders are gonna say, we go up to 80%. It's like, but we don't cover right. closing costs or we only do half the rehab, you know? So you gotta look at the fine print, careful on the, you know, <coughs> I'll super take a good deal. I'll take a 65 covering the end rather than the 80. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's just a numbers game always. It's always a numbers game. And so yeah, go ahead. Um, I understand that the the interest rate is gonna vary mm -hmm. from person to person, but is there a minimum that you require down payment? Like I, I dealt with a lender who required fifty percent down no matter what. Uh so no. The, uh, the certain lenders certainly will have their own methods. That's probably a private lender, yeah, that would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, that's that's a bit high, but that's their risk tolerance, and you can do that when you're. He's probably a smaller private lender. Um, when I say smaller, it's all it's all uh, perspective, I suppose, because we, we have about two hundred million in funding. When we when we think of smaller, they're usually between four to five million, mm -hmm. and they'll tap out pretty quick. So because it's it's really not as many deals as you, you think. So they make they make the rules up saying fifty percent down payment is the only deal they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And yes, they will find those deals. He probably has great rates, but um, yeah. So that's that's his methodology. Well, like I said, wild wild west out there. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, it it literally is different per property per person because uh, it could be the same. I mean, even repeat borrowers. They, like there's no static down payment. Well, I can give you some guidelines on what to expect. Average twenty percent down with us. Average. I've seen it lower. I've seen it higher. If you're loan size is above 100,000, you are minimum gonna need 30,000. That's probably what I would say. Um, there's a, it gets a little tricky when you're when you're in the lower size, and that's considered a lower, 100,000 is a low, considered a low size loan in this world. Um, when you get there, it's actually riskier for us because there isn't as much room if things go wrong then let's say if you're in a property where it's worth four to $500,000, there's a little bit more leeway there. So we may add, we may give you a $200,000 loan and only ask for 40 grand. And then you come back later and say, okay, I want a hundred thousand dollar loan. And we're gonna say, okay, well you still need to bring 30 grand. Proportionally, that doesn't really work, but that's just, it's, it, it comes down to the loan size, the borrower and the property. Um, but I usually, I usually just tell people, just save up 30 grand. If you want to do a fix and flip, save up 30 grand, minimum. Uh, you're actually gonna want more than that, but minimum 30 grand. Yeah. So that kind of answer your question. Okay. Uh, Penalties to pay it off early. What's that? Penalties to pay it off early. So the question is about prepayment penalties. Uh, typically when you're in a 12 month loan, depending on your lender, they will write in fine print, uh, 
prepay penalty meaning uh, if you finish the flip early, you're out in, let's say, six months, good for you. But depending on the fine print, they may say you still owe us six months of interest only payment. We do not. So you're good there. We encourage you to fix the flip as fast as you can. And because, like I said, we don't want to go to the foreclosure process. Some lenders do. We do not. We encourage you to get out um, and keep making more money. So, yeah. Thank you. Do you have any short term buy and hold programs? Like uh, coming in and then refine out in a couple years or whatever? Sure, yeah. So the question is do we have any uh, long, well, buy and hold programs going from short term to long term mm -hmm. on the refi? So, yes and no. Yes, similar to the same question of we can turn it into a five to 10 year if need be, but the rates are really high. So I encourage you to find a long-term lender. We can of course refer you to ones we work with, but I encourage you to find a long-term lender that refinance you out of our loan. Um, does anybody need an explanation of, of what that, the re refinance meant there? Okay, okay, okay. Is that, is that good? So basically it's, a, it's just, just to kind of like doing a flip, you just come in as a buy and hold and you have to refinance the flip. Exactly, it's the same exact process. We look at it the same. We determine our risk the same. The only difference is your exit strategy on that. Are you still lending the 65 LTV? For the most part, yes. Depends on what you're doing. Um, sometimes with buy and holds, people uh, like to do lipstick on a pig. Uh, so so they, they just get it rent ready and they're not actually pushing ARV numbers. So that 65% ARV number doesn't necessarily hold to that. It depends on what the borrower is trying to do and what we worked out with them. Okay. For the most part, when buy and hold is a strategy, no matter what you tell us, we know what's going on. We know you're going to be you're going to tell your contract, don't worry about it. Just just skip that. I got to save money, right? So we will come down a little bit on our risk there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you use your um, contractors to come in and look at the value or no? No, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's that's a good point. So. Rehab numbers, that's interesting. Uh, we can tell a good borrower in the first, I don't know, 60 seconds of a conversation. Um, and the biggest indicator is the rehab numbers. So, I mean, we, we've seen thousands of deals, right? So, so we look at all day. If you're coming in at, let's just say, a thousand square foot property, just given the basic, and you say to us, this thousand square foot property is going, I can rehab it for $10,000. You know, we immediately just say, thanks, come back another time when you learn more. If you come in and say 30,000, we're thinking, all right, you're probably, this is probably your first deal. If, if, you're, if you're thinking a thousand square feet of 30,000, you're gonna learn a lot here. You're gonna come out of pocket because it's gonna be more than 30,000, but we will do a deal with you. If you come in and say $50,000, to push our ARV numbers, we're saying, okay, you've probably done a flip before. Um, we don't need to send a contractor to, to determine that. I mean, it's basically as simple as I just as I just said. The risk is more on the borrower on that because if you're under, it's not coming out of our pocket. You you don't get to come back and say, hey, I'm over budget, ten grand. Can we just raise the loan a little bit here? We've already given you our max risk. Those numbers are not changing. So that's why I said save up thirty thousand. You're actually going to want to save up more than that because you're going to want to have you're going to want to be able to cover the I didn't expect that scenario and that always 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 happens like I I've never seen a deal where the bar where the borrower says went perfectly followed the scope of work 100 percent and we were done like it just it does not happen that way and you should expect that too no matter how easy the house looks there's always something um, so keep that in mind. Um, some people say 10% reserves. As a lender, I say 30% reserves. <laughs> um, but that, you know, I, I get it. I'm probably more on the risk adverse side. So, um, but that's pretty much it. We just, uh, you know, before we before we send the money over, we will ask for a scope of work. Uh, scope of work is just when you are looking at a house and you've gone through with your contractor and said this is the work that needs to be done. And as long as it's roughly accurate to what we expect on a rehab then we're good, because we also know the condition of the house, so we'll say, hey, was this a shell? I mean, a shell meaning, like, no walls, they need to redo the electric, plumbing, and all of that. We know that 50,000 easily is 70 to 80,000, because you have to redo, I mean, HVAC, plumbing, and electric cost $20,000, right there. So, so yeah, it, it all, it, there's just, there's, 
it's hard to uh, give you a perfect range on that, but we have a good idea of what to expect for the house. So, um, so yeah, we don't need to send a contractor. Um, yeah. I have one more question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, it, my deal fell through because there was an underground oil tank that they didn't, we mm. didn't expect. Yeah. Is that something you guys back out of then as well? Uh, so typically we will ask you to do the oil sweep mm -hmm. prior um, because you should want to back out sure. if that's the case. Uh, those things can run you 100 to 200 grand, and not exaggerating on that. So uh, yeah, typically, honestly, typically we'll back out unless you get it removed. Okay. Um, and then on our own pocket. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. their own pocket. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Or or if it works, I mean, well, I, I guess I could clarify that if. Um, if you include it in your renovation costs and the and the numbers still work for us, we'll do it, okay. right? Like if, if you say it's going to cost us, you know, forty grand or whatever, and it's part of your rehab, we'll, we'll, we'll do it with you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard in Jersey there was a if you could remove your own oil tank without having a license guy as long as it was under five hundred gallons or something. I did not sign my realm of knowledge. <laughs> well, it was <laughs> a guy that actually dug it. It was a, a major contractor. He's been around for thirty years. Had him come out to inspect a septic system, and was talking about them, and we got mutual friends and all. And the owner had the oil tank removed as part of our deal to buy the house, and my mm -hmm. son's still buying the house, I should say. And she had it removed, and oils tested, and all that and came back fine. But he said you can remove your own oil underground oil tank if the homeowner can, sure, before you even put it up for sale, and there's no longer an underground oil tank. I'm pretty sure you still have to do tests to exactly. make sure that there's no leakage. Exactly. So that's the cost. Running. So that's the cost of the leakage. Because if you're right, you do it wrong. They have to be bored. They bore a hole through the bottom of the county. Gotcha. And if the soil's clean, then you're allowed to fill it. I know in Burlington County, you're allowed to fill it with sand and stone. So it's all about the soil. You don't have to do it physically in the tank. Let me ask you a question. Are you a unified organization? Uh, or do you just file a contract through an attorney and what state laws do you follow? I mean, you're incorporated in a state, are you like the Delaware? Uh, so, charter? so I have three partners. Okay. Uh, I handle New Jersey and Delaware. Okay. Uh, my other partner handles Pennsylvania. Sure. And my other two partners handle Maryland and DC. So there's entity, the LLCs in each of those. Right. Uh, but we're all part of the Maryland. So, so your your contract would be bound by the by the the, the, the laws of Maryland. The state uh, Maryland. No, it depends on what the deal is. Okay, so you would here you would do a Jersey contract. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah, we, we follow Jersey laws. Now, we don't we don't need a, a license to do this. Right. Banks do it with certain there are certain loans. Yeah. So a lot of these guys do private money. No, that's why we can't touch owner occupied because we basically agreed with the government saying. We can make up our own rules. We don't need a license, and they said fine. But if they live there, you can't let them. Right. So That's you're right. basically at FTC, federal, and New Jersey. Yeah, exactly. So our, our lawyers are essential to making this 24-hour closing work for us. Right. They, they're good. They're, they're probably the best you can find. Um, when, when you yeah. you said 24 hours closing, but you could take a, a week up to 10 days to actually get the money based on what the, the paperwork it needs to meet. Nope. We can wire tomorrow. Wow. Depending yeah. on the deal. Great. Well, and that is based on the deal, obviously. Yeah, it's based on the deal. Yeah, we don't do any, we don't do any like, pre-approved by the borrower. We don't do that. We were looking at that house. Uh, 17 hours is my record. Um, wow. Yeah. It's good. It's great. It's good. It's good. So. It says on your website you do, do one to four unit, like duplexes, triplexes. Quadruplexes. I mean, we can do any. We can do residential. What, how, long, how long of a term will you do it for? Typically, when people are using us for those buying holes, they're typically doing the same thing. They're fixing it up and they're out. I, I guess, bit, yeah. Bit crew, guy. Bit, bit crew to fix it. <laughs> it's done in six months. Yeah, it's done in six months. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, we can work it out with you. We can go five, ten years if you need. Um, for the most part, though, 95% of people who use our money, they're expecting the short term, 12 months. A lot of people use us called bridge loans especially for the larger commercial ones, like <coughs> talking like the 30, 40 million dollar ones, they may only need another million to gap uh, the loan. So they'll, they'll say, hey, I have an investment property here, I'll put it up as collateral, can you give me another dollars? A lot of guys will buy a vacant one that needs work and then fix it up and rent out three units to leave one empty so they can sell it to another occupied or investor. Mm -hmm. and then 
Well, one, we're, whatever you want to do after you're out of our money, you can you can move in and live there. So that's fine. But during our note, you cannot move in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and that is that's one thing. It's like we don't even like if I is see that, that. Is that a minimum twenty percent down for those kind of properties? Or? Same same thing. No minimum. It, it's going to depend on the property and the borrower. Whatever makes I, sense. Yeah, I will say with the larger you get, like when you start getting in that territory, you looking for a million. We usually start asking for a little bit larger down payment or more collateral. So cross collateral is a great thing if you guys ever have clients or if you have it yourself that have properties they own free and clear, maybe there's no mortgage on it. That's basically just having cash to us. You, you don't even have to come out of pocket with us. So you say, hey, I have this property, uh, one to three, on you know whatever street, I would, and I think it's worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars. But I want to. I want a loan for property over here, and we just come back to that person and say, "Okay, we'll do this. We'll bring three hundred thousand dollars, but you have to bring a hundred thousand dollars to the table." They'll say, "Can you use this property as additional collateral?" So we'll take a look at it. And we'll say, "Yeah, we can pull a hundred thousand out of this. You don't have to bring any money to the table. We'll increase our entire line loan size." So cross collateral is an amazing thing. Highly. Recommend if you have any clients that have that, let them know about this. A lot of times people don't realize they could just uh, take cross collateral and do that. It's a so you go put a lien on that property. What's that? You put a temporary lien on that property. Correct. It becomes a temporary a blanket lien. Yeah. So basically, uh, I guess everybody would know what a lien is. Yeah. Of course. Um, so yeah, it's it's one lien on both those properties. So if you were to sell this property, we actually get paid first, um, or this property. So we get paid first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? And I'll we'll go into rates real quick. <laughs> the scary part. The scary yeah. part. All this sounds good until I get into this part. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> so you're gonna hear you're gonna hear these terms when you ask the lender. Uh, how how much do you cost? How much do you cost? So back in 2008 when we started this, most loans were about 16 and 6 is probably your average. And what that means, when you hear a lender say we're 9 and 1, you can get 10 and 2, 12 and 2. That means for a 12 month note, for 12 months, it's going to cost you 9% to be in that loan total. So if you're taking out a $100,000 loan, going to cost you $9,000 over the course of 12 months, so $109,000 total. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. The one means, oh yeah, you're also giving us one point at closing. You're paying 1%. It's part of your closing cost is what it becomes. So these are your rates, and these are accurate to what they are today. 9 one's pretty aggressive. You've got to be a pretty experienced investor or have a good amount of collateral. Um, Tough to get. You have to go through a lot of paperwork and probably have to do a few deals with, a, with an investor. 10 and 2, still pretty hard to get, to be honest. 12 and 2, I'd say, is your average. That's going to be your, your average. If you're a first time flipper, you have a few flips. Um, 12 and 2 is what you can expect. Let me, let me add one more, too, plus fees. So, the reason. Fees? Fees. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> So this, uh, the one point goes to your, so this is for your closing costs. The one point goes into your closing costs, so if it's a $100,000 loan, you would bring an extra $1,000 to the closing table. Fees are also due at closing. So this is going to be, you have to pay for an appraisal for your lender. You have to pay for a lawyer, not your lawyer, our lawyer, because our lawyer is gonna review all the documents, the title, the closing documents and all that. You have to pay for that. It paid for the origination and bank fee. So even though we're private money, our money still comes from a bank. That makes where we keep it. Uh, so that's to wire the money. That's also to originate the deal, which means to evaluate the deal. Um, those are our three fees. Other lenders are going to have even more than that. So you, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because even though they might, if it's just like what I was saying with the leasing a car, they might say, yeah, we can get you a nine and one. And then you look at the fees, you're like, that's $10,000 in fees. That just became a nine and six deal happens all the time and they, they sneak it in on you as you go so they 
they try to drag you along so you don't want to go find another lender, and then by week four, they're like, oh yeah, here's another fee, and you're, you're trapped by that point. So try to get your fees up front. Try to get that data up front as best you can. Um, but that's the same for all of these. Every single one of these is going to have fees. So it's one point plus fees. Uh, like I said, 12 and 2 is your average. And then you get over to private money. Your minimum is basically 12 and 2. 14 and 4 is where we are. We are. We, I mean, we know it. We know we're on the high end. Uh, but nobody can close the 24 hours. That's basically what it is. That's why, that's why I say we are known as the deal savers because half the time we get a call, it's because these guys are screwed up. Or these guys change things. So private money, this is all out west, they can change things on your last minute. And then if you don't agree, the deal doesn't happen. So you're out back in the market, you have one week to close, nobody's gonna do that in one week. So that's, that's when people give us a call. So 14 and four, now there's no prepay. So if you're out in six months, well that was only 6%. But these guys might lock you in for 12 months, and now you have to pay the full 9%. So there's just there's just little. It's all about the, the fine print that you want when you're doing your math. Um, I mean, honestly, most of our repeat borrowers, they they have fallen for these traps. They they go to a tenant to a lender. Three months later, they're calling us for the next deal, being like, "I'm so sorry, I left you guys. You guys are so much faster, so much easier." Like draws, I'll get into draws, but we do those in zero to three days. Um, that, that's your rehab. I'll, I'll get into this, but just know. We're the fastest there too, because that's how we make our money. We know that. That's why we, we claim our rates. So if you're an experienced investor and you're doing three to seven flips a year, you want a fast lender, or three three plus, I should say. Um, now sixteen and six, that's really expensive. I I, I don't really know why you'd be going there. I get it, but it happens. Um, back in two thousand eight, we were fifteen and five, and we were the cheap money. So over the last 10 years, like it just, just keeps going down and down. This is actually one of the indicators uh, that we're near a top, is because so it's maybe more than you guys care about. I'll give you a little, little inside information on what's happening on the, on the lending side. The banks collect, let's just say 3%, it can actually be more than that. They collect 3% of this 9%. So as these guys, basically in a war with each other. They're, they're, it's called a price war. They're pushing each other down. The banks are also coming up, saying, hey, we want 4% now. So these guys are making less money, and banks are asking for more money. So it becomes a bubble, and basically you're going to see, which is what happened back in 2008, at, I mean, during all the crash, is banks pulled all their lines. They said, no more. You're not doing this anymore. These guys aren't any, making any money. They just got wiped out. So. Now's a good time to get these rates. I'm not gonna lie. Get, get them while you can. I encourage it all the time. Like if you can get these nine one rates, grab them. Um, but that's that's the inside war that's happening. Just so you guys are aware of the industry. Um, whereas private money, we just, we just watch from the sidelines. So. So if I'm going to borrow a hundred, these are based on a hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So I'm going to base on borrow a hundred thousand dollars. So it's going to cost me a hundred fourteen thousand dollars plus. So I'm at 118, and my interest rate is what about 1.32 per month. 1.167. 1.167. Yeah, and that's due to you at a 14 rate. So yeah, and that's so that you're correct. At a hundred thousand dollar loan, you're all in is 18 percent. That's right. if you're in it for 12 months. Hopefully. Your, your plan of being out much, much so if I, if I if I get this thing turned around in nine months, uh, I save three months You're correct. of 18% money. Yeah, so it would come down to 15, or roughly 15%. Yeah, that's right. Whereas the banks might ask you for that. Correct, so make sure you gotta re read that contract. And yeah. and those rates, like the 14.4, that, that ink does not have any kind of hidden fees in it. Does have fees, all these have fees. No, I mean yours. You are through fourteen four. Do you have fees yeah. as well? Yes. And do you have any uh, any uh, idea concept of what the fees usually run? It's flat. It's flat every time. So I, mean, I can write it here. Uh, it's about twenty one hundred. Okay. So twenty one hundred is a moderate fee size. So we're going crazy. 
It doesn't matter the size, because we don't make money on this. This is this is basically the cost of business for us. So 995 is our deal with the bank as well as the origination. 750 is our lawyer fee. 400 is so we don't do we don't do appraisals, but we do send an inspector out to the house uh, because we've had people try selling us land. <laughs> so you'd be amazed at the uh, level of fraud people will go to. They, they've created fake appraisals. They put fake houses together, and sure, everything lines up because they also fake the title company, which is great too. Wow. Yeah, um, and then we get there, and we're like, this, this is a piece of land. So we make sure we send an inspector out to check that out. house. Yeah. So so that's it. That's that's it. Every every single loan. So no matter what, if you do a loan with us, you're paying twenty one hundred dollars. Okay. So is, is your interest due per month while the uh, project is going on? Typically, yes. I would probably say 90% of our deals, that's how it's structured. If you're, if there's enough room in the deal, meaning um, you're so far, your numbers are so good that we can say we're going to put the first few months of, you know, of your payments into the loan. Uh, but typically, like I said, 90, maybe more, 90% or more, you are paying uh, every, the first of every month the sure. interest only. So, so one thousand one hundred like four grand. Say again? That could, that could run a few thousand dollars every month. Oh, yeah, if you, if, right. If you have a $400,000 loan out with us, yeah, you're 4500 almost 5000 on that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have draws or is it one lump sum? Yeah, so we, we do draws. Okay. okay. I, I guess, guess that's a good segue to draws. Any other questions on this before we go into? Yes, just one more. Yeah. Um, the attorney that you have, that's yeah. not for my buyer. That's just for you guys? Correct. Just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, correct. So that, that attorney, their job is to protect us and only us. Now, don't get me wrong, we, we also want to help the buyer too, so we can you know, send questions and whatnot over to our lawyers, we do it all the time. Uh, but in the end, we want to make sure the borrower knows these lawyers are protecting us. Correct. Uh, and if you have any questions, we encourage you to go to, to your lawyer. Yeah. Here we don't. And then in North Jersey, where I'm actually asking for it, they have attorneys. So it just seems like one attorney fighting the other attorney, and then you guys have an attorney too. It's, it's really a headache, in all honesty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we hate that. Okay, good. Uh, we I hate, hate that. It too. We love the South Jersey. <laughs> uh, they're, I always have to be careful because I'm on camera. Um, I encourage you to talk to your lawyer about any legal questions you have. That said, you can absolutely go to your title company directly to them. If you're in North Jersey, you do not need a lawyer to close. Correct. Right. It's, it's, it's a custom. It's a custom. Yeah, it it's is a custom, custom in, North in, in North Jersey. Yeah. But many borrowers don't realize that. And uh, so part of being able to close in 24 hours is we know how to close, again, condescending, better than lawyers. We, we just, we, we, this is all we do all day. Lawyers, you know, they'll go through a fraction of what we do. So in short, we know more than them. And they all the time just delay the process. And, and uh, as soon as we get contact with the title company directly, and it's just us and the borrower, boom, we're closing. Um, so that's why I always say, especially when borrowers, like, you can go right to the title, because I do a lot of North Jersey. Okay. So I, I got to deal with this a lot. Um, but honestly, the best lawyers, after doing a few closures with us, they're like, you guys, go do your thing. They also <coughs> get back. They still get paid, so I don't care. That's good. Um, is, yeah. this, is this interest tax deductible?